but I was so scared. I started to have panic and anxiety attacks because I didn't, I didn't trust God. You know, I was afraid. Literally, the moment I smell anything that resembles food, I, I throw up. They told me, hey, we still cannot test you because you don't look like you are dying. You are not part of the, at, you know, at risk group, so we cannot give you, um, we cannot test you for the virus. I stopped posting on Instagram. I stopped because. I just, I just kept, you know, every time I want to quote, the devil is a so this is the last thing they will remind, they remember you for. Ah, the devil is a bastard, to be honest, he's a, he's a bastard, he's a coward. Hello guys, good afternoon, welcome to my YouTube channel, my name is Victoria Ajayi Bembe, I am a fake vlogger from Lagos, Nigeria, currently filming in New York City. Uh, I am so excited to finally be doing this, I mean, I've wanted to do this in the last six years, and this is my first official, official YouTube video, <laughs> and thank you so much for joining so today i want to talk about the topic trusting god during quarantine or trusting god during covid 19 or trusting god during pandemic or trusting god during lockdown whichever one that you want <laughs> um <clears throat> now i struggled a lot you know thinking about talking about this topic <laughs> because if there was anything i was doing when this covid pandemic thing started it was the opposite of trusting god to be honest it was a very scary time for me because as some of you know i live in new york city which is currently the epicenter of the coronavirus and every day like i'm coming from work i'm going out to the grocery store i'm going here and there you hear sirens everywhere i mean just the other day i was going to the lobby to pick up my mail and i saw an ambulance right in front of my apartment building and they came to pick somebody up you know from my apartment now i don't know if the person had covid 19 or if it was something else but you know right now if you see ambulance in front of your apartment it's best it's, it's best you you know you you probably think of the worst and i met them i wasn't even out of my house i was just going down to the lobby to pick up my mail and there they were to be honest my faith has been tested within this past few months more than it has in a long time like really because okay let me start from the beginning i remember the last day i went to work um, I stopped taking the train because in New York City, like the train stations, that like, it's always packed with people. There are so many people in the train station, so you need to be careful. Like literally, when you enter the train, every time I leave the house, like I'm running to take the train, there, there's like a crowd of people that want to enter the same train. So that is like how crowded New York City is. So I decided to stop taking the train and to start taking the bus, even though it was a longer route for me, but the bus was it's lighter than the train was at that time. And I remember this particular day, I got to the train and I started feeling weird. Like I started having this dryness in my truth and like that was all but there was just this dryness like this dryness it was so dry and um i started having anxiety because i was like god do i have this virus Has, have i contracted it because my bus driver was coughing so much <laughs> oh, new york city that one is a story for another day but long story short i came down from the bus i went to um a dunkin donut store to get hot chocolates thinking maybe if i take something warm it's going to help me but it wasn't helping i came home i was just praying to god that god hey god please god hey what's happening god you know i wasn't praying but i was ha, i was calling on god you know it wasn't like a, it was more like you know panic and fear and the following day the dryness was still there this time it was worse like it was worse and i said hey god and you know in my spirit in my spirit i knew i should like you know pray about it and you know just go on my knees or you know just pray about it talk to god about it but talking to god was the last thing on my mind now because i'm like people are dying like pastors are dying like musician gospel musicians are dying if god could you know now i mean i i repented of so many things i thought or i said during that period but i was like if god was going to take care of this all those precious people wouldn't have died i mean if these people could have like you know been infected or died who am i that you know this would not you know so because of all of those thoughts i was so scared i started to have panic and anxiety attack like seriously guys anxiety attack is real my heartbeat was racing like it was racing so hard when i sleep i can actually hear my heart beat in my ears i was so scared i was so terrified because i've never experienced something like that before and then i decided i was going to go to the hospital i mean to the urgent care um for nigerians we have urgent care we have hospitals hospitals er those are different urgent care is where you can just walk in and you know see a doctor so and we had an urgent care close to my office close to my apartment so i went to the urgent care and made all the advice that has been given because if you don't have the virus many people who have the virus are coming to the urgent care so even if you don't have it you have a higher chance of contracting it but i felt like if i already had it what is the point of staying at home so i went to the urgent care uh when i got there i started running a 
little bit of temperature it wasn't really anything outrageous but of course i was having temperature i was not coughing i my temperature wasn't like above 100 but it was my body was warm i was not having sore throat but i was having a dry throat so everything was just weird i mean i didn't sleep on the bed that night i slept in this living room because i happened to share this bed with um of, like i was sharing this bed with a friend then so i stayed in the living room the following morning i woke up very early i wore my clothes i told my roommates i was taking a walk because i did not want them to feel or to like sense that something is wrong because i can imagine if i'm the one who was feeling that who, who's who's you know my housemate is telling me she's going to the hospital uh, like <laughs> even me i won't want to stay so i didn't want any stigma long story short i went to the urgent care i met the doctor the doctor told me hey you don't have a lot of like symptoms and you don't you are not part of the at you know at risk group so we cannot give you um we cannot test you for the virus but they tested me for strep throat it came out negative they tested me for a flu because she thought maybe i picked up a flu or something it came out negative and she said okay listen we're going to give you something for the dry truth and every other thing you're feeling so they gave me ibuprofen they gave me some of this um they gave me something else so I came home i took the drugs it wasn't getting better a few days later i got my period so i thought maybe it was just like pms or something so my during my period my temperature came back to normal the dry throat did not go anywhere so i kept taking in fluid i was following everything on whatsapp and all. my mom was saying oh god mothers that is also a topic for another day my mom was constantly sending me stuff because she was also afraid and all my family members are in nigeria i literally don't have anybody here so i started taking fluid i was taking a lot of fluid i couldn't i couldn't i didn't know what to do at this point so but i knew my best bet was to pray but i wasn't praying to not because i didn't i didn't trust god you know i was afraid and that's what i want to like that's part of what i want to talk about today like fear fear is terrible fear makes you it takes your gaze away from god like fear makes you paralyzed it makes your faith it cripples your faith like i was so afraid i was i slept in the living room on the couch for days when my period was over um i started feeling a little bit better only two days later i started feeling nauseous my anxiety didn't go away i started having like this heart my heart was racing was racing consistently at a point i could hear it in my ears my um pulse and my neck was racing it was getting really unbearable and to top everything up i started having diarrhea <clears throat> like all of a sudden and then i started losing my appetite i couldn't eat and then i started having nausea like literally the moment i smell anything that resembles food i tr i threw up like i couldn't eat i couldn't do anything so the following day of course i packed my load back to the urgent care hey this is what has happened my symptoms are metamorphosed <laughs> and i told them i can't eat i can't drink i can't have been you know having this constipation i've been having this and that like what is happening to me can you guys test me do i have this virus i was scared not just for myself but because of the people i have that i'm living with in the house and they told me hey we still cannot test you because you don't look like you are dying so they said go home they gave me a lot of drugs to take so at this point i knew that see it is me and god like i knew that there was no 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 help was coming anywhere like the more my mom called me and i was telling her what i was feeling the more she was having anxiety everybody was afraid my fiance was like scared out of his like he was even there like he was comforting me as a man would do but i could tell that he was also afraid my sister everyone were terrified and I, I mean the nausea continued for days for three days the only thing i could take was water even that was not staying down sometimes i threw up the water like it was getting really really bad so at this point i just knew that like i needed to i needed to pray so i i went i remember that day i started having like my nose was blocked now guys i, I never got tested for coronavirus and i'm not saying i had the virus but because i mean i stayed at home with two i have i live with two other people we share everything and none of them have any symptoms i happen to be the only one and i just thought maybe it was anxiety maybe it was fear maybe it was i don't know what it was but i remember that night i went on my knees my mom sent me a lot of psalm and my fiance's mom sent me psalms to read i was reading i was praying i was praying and i remember that night i was praying and god like i could feel god like telling me that why why are you afraid like don't you trust me like I just felt it in my spirit like trust god believe in god nothing is going to happen like this sickness or whatever is happening is not is not going to lead to death like i could hear it in my mind but just getting to that point where i believe in that voice i believe in 
like like i mean you know the you know the bible says that um, that he will keep in perfect peace those who trust in him but the peace wasn't there the peace wasn't there because my heart was thinking about a million different ways that i could die i'll be honest with you guys and i i remember there was that particular night we had this prayer program in my i think the night after that we had this prayer in my church and um during the prayer, I started feeling uneasy. My body was literally shaking and probably because I hadn't eaten, maybe because of fear, maybe because of anxiety, but so many thoughts were going through my mind and something just whispered in my head that, listen, you are not going to make it this night. <laughs> Guys, this thing I'm telling you, I'm not told, like, no member of my family knows about it. And I remember that night, that verse that says that, um, what will worry do? Like, how many of you by worrying has added a single second to his life and I, I remember that night and i feel like this was like the devil putting thoughts in my head and i was like listen whether i do whether i die is to the glory of god and i told god that night that see even if i don't make it in the morning just make sure that i make heaven like that's the most important thing to me right now because i was weak i was tired i haven't eaten my head was banging i had this terrible headache so and i remember that night i said and i told myself i said in my mind that whether I stay awake all night, if I'm not going to make it tomorrow, like there's nothing I can do about it. So I said, God, I like, in, you know that thing that Jesus Christ said, in your life, in your hands, I trust my life or something like that. I'm like, you know what? I put my trust in you. Whatever wants to happen should happen. And I went to sleep. And lo and behold, I woke up the following morning. And I mean, I wasn't feeling all great, but I'm like, okay, no, 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 the devil, it's enough. Like, I remember that morning I woke up, I'm like, no, no, enough is enough. I'm going to stand up, I'm going to eat, I'm going to do this. I went into the kitchen, I prepared oats, I threw up that morning because of the smell of the oats, but I still drank it. I like, I don't care how many times I threw up, I will still continue eating. Like, I feel like the devil was trying to make me give up, you know, and make me tired and lazy and all of that. But I'm like, God, see. At this point of my life, I know I cannot do anything about the situation. If it's going to end anyhow, there's nothing I can do about it. But I will be damned if I'm going to die or sorry, if I'm going to give up without a fight. So I went on, I took, I took that, I took bread, I took banana. Like I couldn't eat a lot of like solid food, but the, li the liquid I could take, I took applesauce. I, like everything that can go, I took it. Then I started like gaining my strength little by little. And you know, at a point... I started feeling weak again. I started exercise. I started aerobics class. I started this 30 minute cardio. Like, I was like, see, if it's going to happen, I'm not just going to give up. Like, I'm just going to fight this thing. Whether I have it or I don't have it, whether it's fear, whether it's anxiety, I don't even know what it is, but I'm done feeling down. I'm done feeling bad. I'm done. I'm done letting the devil take the glory in this situation. So I'm going to do, like, I'm going to. I, I'm going to fight this. So I I started eating. I started reading the word of God. Like I started this um, Bible plan. I mean, if you guys, if you don't have the daily Bible, I don't know what you have. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> they send verses every day. I read that and they started this devotion in the morning. I did that. I joined some devotion in my church. Like I decided to take my mind off of it. I started looking for other topics to like talk about because I noticed I was depressed. Like fear literally paralyzed me. And that's one thing I want to encourage you. See, fear, fear, fear goes against everything that faith stands for because as a christian we are called what believers and trusting god is trusting that god has my best interest at heart it's trusting that see i know many you know top people are dying of this virus i know this thing is killing people but if i'm going to go it's because it's my time to go like no devil can take me before my time so it's you know and that doesn't mean that you just be compl complacent complacent about life <laughs> i'm sorry so it doesn't mean i mean it doesn't mean that you just live life like that, but it's just living knowing that God, see, whatever will happen is going to happen, but I'm still going to trust God. I'm still going to honor God. I'm not going to allow the devil play with my thoughts. God, guys, the devil is crazy. You don't want to know the amount of thoughts I was going through my head. I remember a particular night I took my phone, I called my fiance and I was crying. I was like, I don't feel like I feel down. I feel tired. And you know, it's, it's hard. <laughs> ah, God, you know, my pastor said something one day. She said that, see, isolation is meant for People that are mental, people that are mad. That's why they keep them in isolation. People that are sane. God did not create us for isolation. God created us for what? For intimacy. He created us for relationship. So the devil, you know, because I was also isolated, I didn't have families here. My roommates also had their own issues and problems. So I didn't have anyone I could call. I mean, I've, but I had some amazing church members that were always calling to check up on me. Shout out to Portia. <laughs> If you're watching this video, I love you. God bless you. Like, this lady will call me sometimes. She'll just be like, I feel it in my spirit that something is off. Like, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? Do you? And then she'll connect me to some doctors in the church to talk to. Like, this lady is amazing. So, please, if you have anybody like that, open up to them. Well, um, long story short, I, I mean, I battled a lot. And I still don't know if that was what I was battling with. But, you know, 
it was it, like it was it was scary every time i go to the grocery store and i come back i'm covering myself for the blood of jesus which is good but also also know where your prayer point is coming from like if it's coming from the spirit of fear i was talking about isolation because i was isolated i didn't have any most people i could talk to i didn't want to talk to my mom because she would get worried my fiance i loved him but i also did not want him to you know start getting worried and every if i didn't want to worry people around me so i kept things to myself i kept my illness to myself they were asking me constantly what's wrong with you i'll pick a fight with them just because i don't want to talk and because i was isolating myself the enemy was playing with my thoughts it was playing with me ah god the devil played with me he played with my thoughts and Thank God for, you know, people like this lady I'm talking about that will call me, hey, what is wrong with you? Talk to me. And then she also share her experience, which is almost similar with some of the symptoms I've been experiencing. And I remember there was a Sunday, I, wait, I tuned in, and there was, like, I started having acid reflux. That was one of the things that was happening. And you know that, we, <laughs> ah, God, it is COVID-19 period. Some of us, we trust in our WhatsApp, that, like in our WhatsApp, you know, messages that we trusted in God. My mother, in ex example, I'm sorry to say, like, we send videos, we share stuff around. People send me stuff, take, um ginger and lemon and honey and stuff like that and i was taking it really just literally i was not praying as much as i was taking those things i take it morning afternoon night and there are days i forget to pray so my my faith my whatever was totally dependent on what the information i was getting from people whether i work it doesn't work just so that you know you know you know i trusted so much in those remedies and those remedies ended up and you know eventually when um this my pastor was actually talking about what she had which was acid reflux i realized that this is what has been happening to me like it has been giving me heartburn which you know make my chest run you know faster which you know causes you know nausea and stuff like that and i did not know that all this remedy that i trusted so much um taking um 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 ginger and lemon and stuff like that i was taking it every day it was making it was irritating the stomach line you know and you know my doctor explained to me that it's actually not good for your health it's not something you should be taking all the time but because i depended so much on it and i you know instead of me praying and trusting god i trusted what every other person said apart from what the word of god said which says that you know like Psalm 91 was playing in my head. Like, see, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You will say unto the Lord, it's my refuge, it's my, like, fortress. I was reading it every day. I was reading the Psalm every day, but even whilst I was reading it, as I'm reading Psalm in one hand, I'm drinking uh, 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 <laughs> uh, ginger and lemon in the other hand. Like, where is your trust, actually? If you are trusting now, it doesn't mean that, I mean, if you have medications to take, you don't take it because you are trusting God. It's good to create a balance. But my mind knew that those things I was reading was more of God, please, God, please. Not that I believe God is going to do it. You know, I was taking this like, my faith was divided. I didn't know what I believed in anymore. I was to any body that says, hey, this is what is working. I will go and take it. Why? Because fear, fear crippled me. Fear paralyzed me. Fear made me feel like God is not interested in me. Like he's not, he's not interested. Like he's not going to do it. Like, it made me totally, like, not totally, thank God, not totally, but honestly, it was a very, very troubling time for me. And I just want to encourage someone there that, see, it was the day that I realized, see, I stopped taking those lemons. I can't remember the last time I bought ginger in this house. Like, I passed it in the market, and I'm like, God, look at this thing that I was a slave to all this while. I'm like, no, see, if anything wants to happen, let it happen. As far as when this world is over, I make heaven. That is the ultimate goal. Like, I, I, told, I told the devil that, see, you cannot threaten me with death. My father owns the key of death in his hands, like, he wants it so if that is it death is not um paul said that to die is gain you know to live is for christ to die is for gain if god says he doesn't need me in this earth anymore i'm welcome to come home so the fear the fear the terror like and i'm talking about this there are still days like a few days ago i was still feeling like fear because i went out i touched some things and i forgot to wash my hand before i put something in my mouth like i i almost freaked out like i almost freaked out and this was just like two days ago or something like that so i'm not saying that i've gotten to that level yet but i'm saying that every day i'm learning every day to put my trust in god more in god and not in the things that is happening around me or whatever but like it's good to listen to advice and all but first take it to god in prayer and then no it, you, it will even help you to discern which of these advices is actually the right one or the wrong one so at a point i told god listen i'm not going to take this ginger i'm not going to take any stupid lemon i'm not going to short the drugs that they were giving me that was you know <laughs> very funny i complained of nausea i complained of dry truth the drug they gave me for the dry truth causes nausea <laughs> and the drug they gave me from nausea causes migraine or some of the side effects of migraine which i was already having so when i take it i feel down if, when this sickness is getting over i'm falling into another one so i didn't know where the battle was coming from i didn't know it was even some of the drugs i was giving and i decided to abandon all of them like god see at this point it's me and you i'm going to trust you i'm going to pray more i'm going to praise god whatever wants to happen let it happen i'm done feeling 
you know you know feeling you know fear i'm done allowing fear rule and control my life i'm done allowing anxiety guys anxiety is bad my heart was literally racing every minute my my head was banging i was like god am i going to die and then every minute a siren of uh, ambulance is passing by my window every time so they are going to pick somebody up in my building they're picking in this place and then you go to the urgent care you see people coughing everywhere i was in the hospital four times i went to the hospital and then those people are coughing people have the virus in the same hospital and i was in the same waiting room with them so I don't know. I, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what will happen. But at this point in my life, I'm just in that place where I'm like at peace with myself. I'm at peace with God. Like, see, whatever I want to happen, should happen. The devil is a liar. I'm not going to live my life in fear anymore. I'm going to live trusting God. You know, I'm not there yet. Like, I'm not there yet. But <laughs> I'm not. I'm, not, I'm also not where I used to be. So every day, and I want to encourage you to trust God. See. Everything happening in the world now, jobs have been lost, people are dying, people are falling ill, a lot of things are going to happen. But where will your trust be? Will your trust be in God? Will you like tell God and say, God, come what may, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if God does not do this, I'm still going to praise him. Even if this doesn't end as I want it to, I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to live my life fulfilling the will of God. I mean, I put a lot of things on hold. I stopped posting on Instagram. I stopped because I, I just I just kept, you know, everything I want to put it, then we say, so this is the last thing they will remind, they remember you for. And then I will, I will push back. And and then I don't want to like, I don't want to live life. I don't want to do anything because I'm like, hey, is this going to be the last thing they remember me for? Ah, the devil is a bastard, to be honest. is a, a bastard. is a coward. I won't lie to you. And, you know, just getting to that point where I'm like, no, I'm not going to let the devil, you know, you know, play with my initiative anymore. I'm going to take, you know, take advantage of, you know, some of the word of God, the things he has said in his word, the promises he has made for my life, and I'm going to cling on to it and hold on. He has a purpose for my life, and I'm going to live long to fulfill that purpose, where, which, like, whatever it is, you know? So, and, you know, just reminding myself of some of the things that God has brought me through. I mean, this time last year, was it last year now? No, like, um, November 2018, like, I was in the hospital, 247, I was admitted, I was in surgery, surgery became an infection, in fact, like, it became, oh, it was a total disaster, and at that point, I felt like, God, what is happening, and I remember how God came through for me, like, so many testimonies were coming to my mind, how God has delivered me, and I'm like, so, will God now bring me here to now, like, let go of me, no, that is not the God I serve, so, I just want to encourage you, I don't know what you are going through right now, whether it's financial challenges, whether it's, you know, economic challenges, whether it's health challenges, Challenges. just trust in God and don't let the devil use fear don't let the devil use fear to manipulate you that's his only trick fear false evidence appearing real it is false it is not real hold on to the word of God and hold on to his promises for your life it's easier said than done I know that but I just think that somebody needs to hear this trust God love God and you know live your life fearless thank you so much for joining me again my name is Victoria Ajayi Dembe I will see you in the next video have a lovely lovely day Bye.